Hi, welcome back to another one of my videos. And uh, in today's video, I want to work a little bit more on my Japan series that uh, I have kind of neglected for a while. <laughs> and uh, today we got a really, really cool weather outside. It's a bright sunny day, even though the uh, rainy season uh, has not been uh, officially lifted in my uh, this part of Japan where I'm at. But uh, apparently the other southern part of Japan, uh, the rainy season has been lifted. So yeah, it's not raining. Finally, you know, it's not raining. I'm really so, I'm really excited, you know, um, for the rain, rainy season to go away, and then I can get my silly bike out uh, and start riding it again, and probably do more videos for you guys. Um, so uh, before I begin, if you're not subscribed to my channel, please do. I need all the support I can, and hopefully, I promise you guys, I will get back to the community. I would definitely want to give back to the community, but first, uh, I would need all your support. So yes, the subscribe button. You know where it is. Uh, just help me out there, will you? Okay. Um, I hope all you guys are doing good in this, uh, you know, coronavirus. Uh, situation uh like every developed country that i know you know singapore japan uh, hong kong everyone is just facing the second wave you know you thought you got a coronavirus and, like beat down and everything you know you got get it out under control no it's coming back to bite you you know it's like coronavirus is like a cockroach you know and the minute how many times you flush it down the toilet it just keep coming back up it's so irritating you know so um, you take care of yourself and everyone around you. Mask up. And just uh, you know, stay safe out there. Okay. Uh, to this video, what am I gonna talk about? There we go. Got a little piece of paper here uh, uh, that I I kind of found online and I just uh, scribbled it out. Um, so yeah, I'm just gonna put it uh, put something up here so to refer. You guys can refer to it. Okay. Um, basically, I mean, I want to talk about uh, Nihon Shu which is a Japanese rice wine, which is also known as generally, you know, the, the literal term is called sake. But uh, in Japan, the uh, kanji for sake or the word sake, basically it means alcohol. So any kind of alcohol like uh, shochu, um, whiskey, bur um, not bourbon, <laughs> cognac, yeah, bourbon is kind of whiskey, you know, vodka, uh, spirits, any kind of alcoholic drink is also known as sake. But, uh, Within the sake inside, the, the you know the all the drinks, all the alcoholic drink, the sake. I specifically wants to talk about the Japanese uh, rice wine, uh, which is also known as Nihon Shu. Nihon basically means Japan. Shu means uh, liquor. So um, back then, in the, in the past, when Japan was closed off from the rest of the world, sake basically means Nihonshu because that's the only kind of sake they have. You know, they have uh, like a bunch of rice here, and they have very very good water, and then uh, they have all the ingredients to make a uh, good alcohol, you know, good sake. So um, Japanese rice wine, you know, made from uh, the tradi the traditional sake, you know, I'm talking about the Japanese rice wine. It's made from basically four main ingredients. Uh, water, you need really, really good water. A rice, of course. Um, koji, which is the mold. Uh, yeast, and basically, yeah, that's, that's about, is it yeast? Uh, yeah, yeast, yeah. So this four item is just basically what it's make, uh, used to make uh, the original sake. And when I continue to talk about sake from this point on, I basically will refer it to as the Japanese rice wine, Nihon Shu, okay? not any other kind of uh, alcoholic drinks, okay? Sake. So, and then uh, after Japan was opened up to the world, uh, sometime uh, after the war, the World War One and World War II, um, rice, uh, it became a really important um, necessity to keep everyone alive uh, as a main source of food and because after the war a lot of farms were being destroyed and damaged uh, so rice became a very a rare commodity you know a very expensive commodity and uh, people started making alcohol so what they did was uh, they kind of substitute um, you know the alcohol content with uh, some other uh, alcoholic um, uh, al with some of the alcohol from made not with just uh, rice, you know, made with maybe barley sugars or some other things, you know. So basically, yeah, that's uh, what this, this chart here is about, okay. And the bottom here, it's the basic, you know, the main sake right from, you know, where uh, sake was being first produced in Japan a long time ago during the Edo period or maybe even earlier. This is uh, what it is, you know, it's just four main items, uh, water, rice, uh, yeast, and the mold, the koji. And uh, this 
line of sake is also known as the Junmai, which is also Junmai means a pure rice. Jun is like pure, and then Mai is like rice. So this pot is just made with the original four ingredients. So this is the Junmai Nihonshu or the Junmai sake. Okay, uh, coming down the first line here. Okay. Uh, there are different grades of sake, um, the expensive one and the middle one and then the, you know, the regular one. So you know, there's just so many different grades and how uh, a sake grade is being um, defined is uh, the amount of rice being polished off and the remainder of the rice uh, that's used to make, make the sake. So um, as you polish off more and more of the outer shell of the rice, the grain of the rice itself, you will need more rice uh, to make uh, the sake so uh, as you polish more you need more rice uh, it, the price goes up and uh, it becomes uh, like a premium sake so um, this line right here basically um, the most standard of all sake um, it's basically called the ginjo okay ginjo which is just the standard sake it's like the most um, easily available sake that's where you know the standard is like zero okay at point zero so um, Junmai sake basically has about a 40% of the uh, outer shell polish. So the remaining uh, rice is about 60%. So you polish of 40%, you have about 60% left of the rice. And that is what is used to make the Ginjo sake. Okay, this line here. And then uh, you come back one, you know, to the, uh, what is that, your left? Go back one to the left, it's called the tokubetsu junmai, which is also no tokubetsu means like special, you know. So basically, it's just a specially made uh, sake that it's uh, the standards that are being uh, refined, the way they're being made. Uh, special care is taken. Uh, the, the, it really differs on different brewery in Japan. Every brewery is different. So if they put a tokubetsu jun, uh, like junmai shu or tokubetsu uh, ginjo or something, anything with the tokubetsu special means uh, extra care and extra effort is being uh, you know used uh, to produce the sake it might command a slightly higher premium than your regular ginjo sake but uh, you know it might have uh, a much better taste to it uh, it really depends you know like sake um, it just depends on individual there's like dry sake and sweet sake and then you know there's like a whole different bunch of sake some people like this taste some people like this taste so it really depends on you know an individual needs okay so yeah this is the standard ginjo if you have to know one word you know have to remember one word about japanese uh, sake nihonshu that's just ginjo that's the only word you need to know ginjo okay and then this is yeah the bottom here and then going up this top here uh, this is also known as a the a honjozo, honjozo, honjozo uh, is also a kind of sake. It's just that uh, it's being you know uh, not really perfected. It's being uh, made more in abundance uh, after the war. Like I, I was mentioning previously, uh, sake used to have four main ingredients: rice, yeast, water, and koji. You know the mold, and then uh, because you know after the war, rice is not uh, really easily to come by to make a, uh, you know, alcohol sake because everyone needs to eat it. So other um, stuff are added to the uh, the the final uh, sake. So other stuff like distilled alcohol, sugars, and whatnot. So anything other than these four ingredients will be the hon jozo shu. You know the hon jozo, or you know the jozo shu. So that's how you want to remember it. Okay, the hon jozo. Uh, basically, this uh, top one uh, has other ingredients other than the four main ingredients that's used to make sake. And um, a, they might taste slightly a little bit different than a regular sake. Um, but, uh, you know, it's just two different ones, okay? And then um, they, they have ginjo as well, like the, you know, hon jozo shu. They have ginjo as well. They have toko, tokubetsu hon jozo which is like special like i m mentioned previously so basically this the main sake here that's junmai made of pure rice sake and then the top one here that is has um that has additional stuff added to it so yeah this is just the two main one and then you have to remember just ginjo okay and then moving up from ginjo uh the premium one you know more percentage of the rice are being polished away 50 percent or more of the rice are being polished away it's called the dai ginjo you know there's the dai ginjo 
and then Dai Ginjo, you know, at the bottom. So, okay, sorry for the weird cut. Um, the phone went into sleep mode. So let's just continue, okay. Uh, yeah, you know, top one and the bottom one. Anything at the bottom is called Junmai Sake, you know, Junmai Ginjo. Anything with Junmai, it's just pure, the pure rice sake. Anything that has uh, not, that doesn't have Junmai to it, it's just, you know, something extra added to it. Um, yeah, so it's two different ones. Uh, Dai Ginjo and Jumai Dai Ginjo, you know, the two different ones. Basically, Dai Ginjo is means like the battle version of the Ginjo. So if you wanna, you know, take a, if you wanna try out uh, Nihon Shu, you know, I highly recommend you guys to just remember this for easy reference, you know. Um, Jumai for the regular um, pure rice sake and then uh, anything that's non Jumai. Uh, Ginjo the standard one or the Dai Ginjo, the more refined, the better ones, you know, the the more rice being polished away, the more rice is being needed to make the sake, the more expensive it will be and, uh, you know, it will command a slightly higher premium. But taste-wise, um, basically, I, I, I prefer like, uh, you know, any, any everything um, like Ginjo. Dai Ginjo, yeah, I've tried it, you know, some, it really depends on different breweries. Sometimes I like it, sometimes I, I do not like it. So, yeah, basically, this is a very simple like a chart for you guys to remember if you are keen to try uh, Japanese uh, sake. Um, and uh, as a price guide, any sake between like uh, 2,000 yen to about like less than uh, like 10,000 yen, it's good sake, you know. I, I wouldn't pay like 20,000, 30,000, you know, like expensive money for sake because um, the one thing you need to know about sake is it has to be, uh, you know, the, the better how do I put it? Sake is not like wine or like whiskey that you can keep it and age it for a very long time. The fresher the sake, the better it is. So if it's fresh out of the brewery, just, you know, made and you just drink it, it's it's like the best. And uh, when drinking sake, you can actually taste, you know, how clear and how pure the water is. And then, you know, the rest of the flavor is just kind of like open up in your mouth. It's just, you know, the little tingles around your taste bud. So, yeah, sake, you don't keep them for a long time. It just loses its flavor. You have to drink it the freshest, the better. And do not pay more than like 20,000 yen or 30,000 yen. 30,000 yen is like almost like $300 for a bottle of sake. I don't think it's worth it. But, you know, if you think it's worth it, go ahead. For me, any good sake, you know, within the 2,000, uh, 3,000 yen range to less than uh, 10,000, like less than $100, it's good sake, you know. And um, let's just get that out of the way. Um... When I first came to Japan many years ago, uh, you know, when I was first in Japan, um, I used to check out temples and shrines, you know, like who would not check out like temples and shrines in Japan, they're so popular, you know. And then they do have like every, you know, famous temple and shrines, they will have these rolls of like a beautiful giant Japanese uh, sake barrels, you know, like cask. And th th those were probably donated to the temper by, you know, people who support the temper or for festivals or for investments or I don't know. But those sake barrels, they are just so beautiful and I'm so like, um, you know, so into them. But uh, I always, you know, ask myself, what am I going to do with such a huge barrel of sake? You know, like a, a standard size would be like 32 liters or something like it will cost like a lot of money. And um, I don't know what I'm going to do with that huge giant barrel. And then uh, sometime along, you know, my journey in Japan, I found um, a little barrels like that. <laughs> see? Okay, let's just get this in focus. There you go. I hope you guys can see. Yeah, little barrels like that. See? Yeah, these are like the miniature version of the actual, you know, giant cask barrel. And they're made exactly like that, you know, just in the mini miniature version. And these little, little mini sake uh, barrels, they're like 300 millimeter, mil, 300 milliliters, yeah. About slightly less than a can of beer. A can of beer is like 330 for a regular can of beer. This is like 300 milliliters. And um, it cuts, all these bottles has this little small cap in the back. And basically inside this cask is like a glass bottle. And uh, you just open up, you know, the regular cap. And, uh, you know, pour out your sake, drink them. And then, uh, you know, wash the contents and you can always cap it back. And have this little souvenir, you know, this little sake souvenir. And uh, ever since I bought one, uh, they don't go smaller than this. They have like a slightly different uh, sizes, but this is the smallest one, the mini. They call it the mini taru, uh, which is taru, which basically means cask, you know, all, all these barrels. 
So yeah, this mini Taurus, uh, 300 milli milliliters is the smallest one you can get. And ever since I got the first one during my like long span here in Japan, uh, I picked up so many from different places and uh, some of them you can get online but some of them you have to go to an actual shop um, to get it and uh, you know throughout my journey uh, through different parts of Japan I have uh, uh, found like local um, sake brewery uh, that you know offers like special ones so I, I went around Japan and picked up a lot of this little mini bears I thought like I think I have like, I don't know, like 20, 30 of these. I don't know. I don't count them. And uh, this one's, uh, you know, with the Mount Fuji logo on it. You know, this one's from Yamanashi. Um, yeah, if you're in Yamanashi, you know where Mount Fuji is, uh, you can pick this up easily from one of their souvenir stores. And I have like a whole bunch of them here. <laughs> Basically, just for them here to show you guys. Yeah. Okay, there you go. Focus. Yeah. This one is uh, really special. Wait. In focus, yeah. This one is really special. I, I got this to commemor commemorate um, 2020, you know, this year, and uh, it's just 2020 is a good start of this year. And then uh, the year of the rat, the Asian zodiac, which is the rat is like the first animal, so it's like the first uh, zodiac of the t next 12 years. And 2020 is only a good start. And Japan just entered to, like year number two of the Reiwa era, so everything is a good start. But you know, coronavirus hit and uh, you know, send the whole world into chaos. That hurts. <laughs> yeah, but you know, all those little barrels here, yeah, it's just really cool. Uh, I can't stop collecting them. I'm still collecting them, you know, everywhere I go. Uh, if I find like special ones, I would just get it. Um, but the designs has to be, you know, like uh, traditional designs. And um, uh, all these barrels are made exactly the same. It's just that the design that is being printed and the socket that's inside is just different, you know. And uh, the other reason is because they make really good um, base for 1-6 scale figures and you guys know I, I used to have a lot of 1-6 scale figures I still have them now and I mean I post them on top of these little sake barrels you know and you know just really really awesome as a base you know sit your figures on top and you know you can always give this uh, as a gift to anyone who likes Japanese sake you know it's um, I highly recommend you guys get one of these if you're in Japan or if you can find them you know they're so cute and they're so awesome and uh, you don't have to drink a full bottle of sake. You just have 300 milliliters to try it out. If you like it, then you can buy the sake, you know. Yeah, so basically, uh, today's video is just about uh, Japanese sake, you know, Nihonshu in general. To, uh, hope you guys uh, have, um, you know, can get yourself some Japanese sake and enjoy it, you know. <laughs> it's, uh, they don't have the highest alcohol, like, percentage, but they're so good with, like, food and, you know, uh, with friends and whatnot, you know. They're really easy to drink, and I, I really highly recommend them. And, um... Hopefully, you know, uh, once the coronavirus and everything is over, folks can start coming back to Japan. And uh, if I do get a chance to meet you guys, uh, you, you can be sure I'll get you some sake. You know, we can have, uh, you know, like a meal together or something. We can hang out, ride a silly bike or something, and maybe do a YouTube video. I don't know. So, yeah, basically, uh, this is my Japan series. Uh, I think it's the third one in the series. I uh, hope to get more support from you guys and uh, please uh, subscribe to my channel if you're, if you're not and uh, let me know in the comments what else you want to see in my Japan channel. I'll talk about mostly things in Japan uh, from a Singaporean or foreigner's perspective. So yeah, basically um, I try not to bore you guys out too long. Uh, I'll end the video here. Um, meantime, take care. Take care of yourself. Be kind to animals and uh, mask up. Stay safe and uh, I'll see you guys in future videos. Bye.